What's going on, Icon Fam? Big Jer, back with you guys again. And today, we're gonna be in Ableton 10. Building off our last video where we made that super saw, we're gonna be making a nice effects rack. A reverb rack, to be specific, that you could use on this sound, or really any sound that you wanna preserve the transients and keep that big reverb feeling. All right, let's get into it. All right, so before we get into making this reverb rack, let's take a listen to what we got. Um, you guys remember this uh, from last time, so we don't have to listen to it again. But if I solo our super saw, what I want you to listen for is the gaps in between, okay? This is what this reverb rack is really all about. Um, this is kind of solving that age old problem of running your sound through reverb. Even if you put it on ascend and return, you're still running a portion of your sound through the reverb unit. And that's going to mess with the transients, it just is. Um, so this way we're able to, you know, kind of have your cake and eat it too. So what's gonna happen is we've got a rack and we're basically going to um, have a reverb chain and have a compressor right after the reverb. And what we're gonna do is actually side chain it to itself or the super saw, okay? So what that's gonna do is push down on the reverb while the super saw is playing. And that's gonna preserve the transients. But then during these little breaks here, it's gonna pump back in. Let me show you what I mean. So that's kind of like having your cake and eat it too, because we're hearing the transients of the ar the articulations of the transients while the super saw is playing, but then during the breaks we get that big reverb feeling that we like. Let's get into making this. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is unfreeze this. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just get rid of the rack because we're gonna be rebuilding it and. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. This is only here to catch the peaks. That's really all it's doing. Um, and we've made the super saw. It's the exact same one we made last time. So great, let's start getting this uh, reverb rack working. So let's go ahead and drag in a reverb. Okay, and when I'm doing these racks, uh, well, we're gonna put it in a rack by hitting Command G. Okay, and we're gonna open up our chain selector by hitting that button. So now we've got our, um, our reverb in a rack and on a chain. Okay, I could also put a blank chain in by right clicking in this box and hit create chain and I've got a blank chain. So we're gonna use rename uh, command R and we're gonna name this dry, okay? And just drag it to the top and I'm gonna rename this verb. Okay, now anytime you have more than one thing in a rack, um, you're always going to overload the master here, especially if it's gain staged. So let's just bring these down um, a couple. Okay, and we're gonna end up bringing the reverb down a lot more but um, for now, we'll just keep it like that. So we've got a dry chain where our transients will be preserved and we've got our reverb, okay? And this is where we're gonna kind of just pour that on. So let's set this up um, for success. Uh, since it's in a rack, we're gonna want 100% wet, just like if it was on a return, okay? Let's uh, not use this EQ because we're gonna put an EQ after it. Um, our pre-delay, I'm gonna bring it down to um, zero. Um, because, or 50 milliseconds, so the fastest it can be, because, um, you know, we're actually setting up kind of a custom pre-delay. Okay, and I'm gonna bring my size down and my decay time up a bit. Okay, I'm gonna switch this from eco to high, and I'll move my spin over a little bit there. Okay, and this is just gonna give me a good standard uh, reverb. Cool. So now we need to start, we got a standard reverb thing happening here, so this is basically right, like running it in parallel. And obviously that sounds really like we're in a bathroom. And even if I turn this down. It still ends up sounding a little bathroomy, right? Um, so we're gonna use our little trick to fix this. Cool, so here's here it goes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drag a compressor after the reverb, okay? So I'm gonna grab myself a compressor, a little pro tip is the uh, Live 8 compressor is a little bit faster. So uh, I don't know if you guys uh, ever notice a little clicking happening when you're doing your side chains, if you're using the um, Ableton Live 9 compressor, 
but the uh, Ableton Live 8 compressor, I'm not saying it's a better compressor, I'm saying it's a faster compressor and better for side chaining. Cool. So we get into our side chain by opening up this and we're gonna engage it. And we actually want to go to our super saw, but we could actually grab the dry chain here. So let me show you what I mean. I wanna go grab my super saw and then we'll have another drop down menu and I can grab dry um, pre or post. It doesn't really matter because there are no effects in here. So, you know, doesn't matter. So there we go. Now it's gonna be coming in and I'm gonna use the um, EQ to kind of trim out the fat, so to speak, so I, so I get the reduction doing what I want. And a, another good little tip is, you know, I, I tend to set my, um, I tend to set my, my side chains with my eyes as much as my ears because your gain reduction here is going to be like, if it's down, it's being side chained. If it's up, it's not. So it's as simple as that. And we'll engage our look ahead, okay? And let's see if we can get this to kind of work. By the way, FF1 is the uh, mode for the Ableton Live 8 compressor that is the fastest. Cool. Let's go ahead and bring the volume back up so we could really hear what this is doing. And remember, when this is down, like when you see this gain reduction meter down, that means that our dry channel is pushing down on the reverb. And when it comes up, you'll be able to hear that pump effect in between. Very cool. Okay, we could uh, pick up our release a little bit. Nice, very cool. Looking great. So this is going to give us that reverb rack we were talking about. Okay, so in its basic most form, that's that's essentially the rack. And um, you know, you don't you don't have to just use this on a super saw. This could be any sound, any sound at all. Um, like I said, I, I tend to use this on, geez, man, everything, vocals to snares to, you know, arps, anything. Um, cool, so we're gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna hit Command R to rename this. We'll just call this our verb rack, okay? And you know, it's your boy, big jerk. Cool, and we can just go ahead and drag this into our user library anywhere we want. And then we have this rack that, you know, all you'd have to do is set your um, side chain to target whatever you put the rack on. Um, there are maybe one or two more things we could do to make this even better. So let's talk about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click into my dry um, channel, my dry channel, and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna grab my EQ8, okay? What I'm gonna do is do a little mid side on this. So. I'm gonna, this is stereo. I'm gonna go to mid side here, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mids down a little bit, and actually boost the mids, you know, right around this area. I'm gonna go over to the sides and do just the opposite, in the sense of I will just raise the sides a little bit. So what this is gonna do is just make uh, make the whole super saw sound just a little bit wider. Let's hear a before and after. Simple little trick like that really goes a long way, okay? And down here on the um, reverb, to make the reverb seem just a bit wider, I'm gonna grab a utility. And what I'm gonna do is uh, with, if I, if I go to the left, you know, it'll be uh, more of a mono sound. And if I go to the right, it'll be wider. So let's just spread out our reverb a bit. And you could feel that grow over on the sides. And finally, I'm gonna add an EQ at the end here just to uh, roll off everything under 300-ish, okay? Now remember guys, this is gonna be our reverb rack here, but um, you don't have to stop at two chains. You know, you could add yourself an OTT or a chorus or, you know, really the uh, sky's the limit, you know, anything that you want to make this rack uh, amazing. But this is the foundation to your basic reverb rack. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. Remember, this reverb rack can be used on any sound that you wanna preserve those transients and keep that big reverb feeling. It doesn't have to just be a super saw. This is something I use on vocals, plucks, basses, everything. All right guys, stick to this channel because we got more good stuff coming. See ya.